Coming to a community call near you, Gary Trinder. Right. Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone, to today's Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework Bi-Weekly Sync. Today is June 29th, and I am your host, Gary Trinder. And if I move on the next slide, <laughs> that will help. Um, so today on our agenda, we have the latest update on the SharePoint framework. Then we have a roundup of the community uh, project updates. We have our optional pitch time with Together Mode. And then we have our three stars of the day. So we have three demos. Uh, first up, we have Alex Terentiev, who's going to show the new card template options for Viva Connections in the new SharePoint framework uh, 1.18, uh, which will get a little bit more info from VESA in the next few slides. Uh, we then have Daniel Turley, who's um, going to be talking about SharePoint Framework at uh, Microsoft and the Accelerator components. Uh, and then we have uh, Samir Dowdy, uh, who's going to talk about tracking your modern SharePoint uh, usage with Google Analytics. So uh, just to recap, if you're new to the community, we have lots of resources uh, available. We have the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community videos, uh, the LinkedIn group where you can go and create discussions. We have uh, a plethora of open source projects that you can get involved in and contribute with. Uh, we've got sample galleries where you can see what other people have built and have contributed um, as well, get inspiration for maybe some of the projects uh, that, uh, that you are working on. Um, Lots of links on there, uh, but the only link you really need to remember is aka.ms slash community slash home, uh, where you'll be able to find all of the resources uh, from the community, everything that's on this uh, page. Uh, so we have uh, several Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community calls. Uh, we have the, uh, the the Tuesday call, uh, which we just had the last call of, uh, of, of uh, June. Uh, it's going to go on a break. It's going to be back on the 22nd of, of August. So this is the uh, every Tuesday call. We then have the Power Platform Office add-ins, um, the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community uh, bi-weekly call, and this call, the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework call. Uh, if you want to check out any of the details, join the other calls, uh, you can get all the uh, recurrent invites from aka.ms slash community slash calls. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, the next uh, Microsoft 365 Power Platform call, the Tuesday call, uh, will be back on the 22nd of August. Uh, so we're going to have a break on that call. But the Thursday calls, this call, uh, the biweekly calls will continue throughout the summer. So you are you, you've got still community available all the way through that uh, summer break. And if you would like to come on this call and uh, present, um, then uh, Feel free to fill out the uh, the request form. Uh, we'd like everyone to uh, uh, to share what they have been uh, working on, no matter you know what you're working on across Microsoft 365. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, go to aka.ms slash community slash request slash demo uh, to uh, get yourself on this call. Uh, over to David. Thanks, Gary. Well, friends, uh, we have some updates for you on sharing is caring. We are finally getting some dates out for you. I was on a call with Hugo this morning and we were getting those scheduled. So be on the lookout for that in the next couple of days. For those that have submitted a volunteer request to help out, we will be scheduling calls with you. For those that don't know, sharing is caring is a program that provides hands on guidance. That means that we're going to join teams calls like this in small group settings that are not recorded. So they're safe space. And we're going to show you how to accomplish certain things like submitting via GitHub. You're not sure what those weird phrases mean, pull and fork and blame and raw. Don't worry about it. We're going to learn together and you're going to walk away empowered and ready to contribute to the community in a variety of ways. Be sure to keep checking out aka.ms slash sharing is caring for the latest updates on those dates in the next couple of days. Now, once you have contributed, we want to recognize you for all the work that you're doing. Our recognition program has continued to grow. We are uh, we are expanding it. We've been uh, improving the way that it captures your information, as well as investing even more with Credly. Uh, so this is not going away. You've seen that the Credly badge system for certifications uh, is going away, but this is not. This is powered by the community for the community, and we are doubling down and investing even more. So definitely go to ak.ms slash community slash recognition. Uh, we want to recognize you, and we're coming up on the end of the month. So be on the lookout for a bunch of badges that are going to release and in, in your inbox soon. Gary, back to you. Thank you, David. And over to Vesa for the updates on SharePoint Framework. 
Excellent. So we last night we did release uh, 1.18 uh, public preview. So this is the beta one for 1.18, uh, and it has some cool new features. So let's go to the following slide uh, where we actually showcase those. So um, Alex is going to do a live demo today uh, related on some of this stuff, but I wanted to actually be a super explicit, explicit in this stuff. Uh, so we have new layouts now available in uh, 1.18 for Viva connection. And that's really the key part of the 1.18. There will be other updates as well uh, as we get closer to the GA of 1.18. We'll share more details on that. Uh, let's go to the following slide. Uh, this is basically just a updated search chart on, on the growth and um, just to like always keep you up to date on that people are using SharePoint Framework a lot. There's tens of millions of monthly active users uh, worldwide in Microsoft 365 for custom components built with SPFX, and it is growing a lot, so which is awesome. Let's go to the following slide. 1.18 was released yesterday, as said. That is a beta one. Uh, it's not intended for production usage, uh, but you can already test out things. You can, for example, uh, learn how to build those cool uh, new templates for Viva Connection and, and be ready for production whenever that happens uh, later within in August and September timeframe. 1.17.4 is the latest version for production usage, and 1.17 was uh, with those features which are being mentioned. Um, but that's kind of a quick recap in here. Uh, Alex is going to showcase uh, those experiences a bit more detailed as the first demo of today. So let's just move forward on projects. Thank you, Vesa. Uh, so let's start with a roundup of the open source projects. First up, we have Julie for PMPJS. Hey, thank you. So we have version 3.17 to be released July 17th, so we're uh, doing some work on that. Uh, just a heads up that we have decided to move our release date to Mondays. That is when the team meets, and so it was just a little more convenient to make the Monday meeting a release meeting instead of trying to meet again on Friday with, uh, with the addition of Bo. It's a little harder to coordinate our schedules, so that made things a little bit easier. Uh, we have a fix, uh, bug fix for batching uh, with uh, some very, very specific scenario uh, adding an incorrect header, so that's fixed. Uh, we're addressing the OneDrive analytics changes. Uh, there was some changes in the endpoint. We need to address those. Uh, we'll have a bug fix for um, the graph content type uh, endpoint called add copy from content type hub. If you are not familiar with that one, I'm just going to point out that if you are trying to add content types from the content type hub and you are doing it the old school SharePoint way, meaning you're one of us uh, ancient ones who have a way of doing that, uh, consider this new endpoint. It makes things a little bit better. Uh, various documentation updates, obviously, as always, version four planning is happening. We have a pinned issue 2670 Eight, which points to a project planning board that is now underway. We are starting to, we consider everything and we are uh, starting that off. We have a V4 branch that Bo uh, celebratory made on Monday. And so we are getting going on V4. Uh, as always, you can get our V3 nightly builds for any of these bug fixes and or whatever that have been uh, merged in. Those PRs, when they're merged in, will show up in the next day's nightly build. Uh, as always, you can follow us on M M365 PMPJS on Twitter or in the um, the t Microsoft 365 community team on LinkedIn. And that is all I have. Back to you, Gary. Great. Thanks, Julie. Um, moving on. So we have CLI for Microsoft 365, uh, 6.9 uh, beta. Um, this is actually really the next release because we are releasing this tomorrow. Uh, so everything that you'll see uh, on screen is going to go into the, the stable release. Um, but we've got updates for Azure AD, for SharePoint, uh, for Purview, and also Teams as well. And we've, we've this has been an issue for a little while about the stability of creating new teams. We've had an issue in there, which we have fixed, and we rolled that, um, that um, enhancements out. We've also made uh, enhancements to our documentation as well. We've moved to Docusaurus um, for our, uh, our our documentation engine. We've updated the search engine as well. So it should be much easier to find things um, that you need uh, for, the, for the CLI. Uh, as always, there's many more enhancements. So go check out the release notes, aka.ms slash CLI hyphen M365 slash notes. If you want to give the beta a try, uh, go to NPM and use the at next uh, tag uh, for installing. Or if you're using our Docker container, uh, Docker container, 
use the next tag uh, as well to get the latest uh, updates. Um, as always, we always want to expand our community. The best place for you to join our community is on Discord. Uh, if you go to aka.ms slash CLI hyphen M365 slash Discord, uh, you'll get the uh, the invite and be able to you know, chat with like-minded folks about the CLI. Moving on. Uh, so. We have a new update. Uh, it is no longer the Microsoft Graph developer proxy. Uh, we have a rename. Uh, so it is now called the Microsoft 365 developer proxy, which you can use to simulate API errors, behaviors, and mock API responses um, from your local machine. Uh, so we have just released the uh, 0.9 version. If you want to go and try that now, go to aka.ms slash m365 slash proxy slash download, uh, where we have added in a new feature that allows you to check if your application is using excessive Microsoft Graph API permissions. So we'll actually tell you, hang on, you've got some scopes here that are just, you know, way too much for what you need, consider removing them um, and kind of increase your, your security uh, posture. Uh, as always, we're looking to uh, enhance uh, the uh, the proxy. So we're looking at batching, adding CI, CD support, uh, playwright integration. Uh, we're looking for a new icon. So if we have any artists out there, suggestions are welcome for the uh, for the new uh, uh, the new name. Um, and we're looking to release uh, the new version at the end of July. And over to Alex for reusable SPFX controls. Thank you, Gary. Uh, so yeah, we are still on uh, 3.14 for React controls and property controls 3.13. And uh, I'm not sure if the date for release is correct or no, but uh, never mind. So we are preparing for the uh, new versions. Potentially in the next couple of weeks, we'll release uh, new versions. We are waiting for a few PRs to be merged. And uh, as always, uh, contributions are welcome if you find any bugs or if you feel that something is missing and want to uh, contribute, please create DPR and we will happily merge it and uh, uh, mark you as a contributor to our great reusable controls. Thank you. Back to you, Gary. Thanks, Alex. And Adam. Okay, now, do you hear me? Maybe now? There you go. Yeah, I can hear you. Go okay, <laughs> I managed. Thanks. So, anyway, Viva Connections Toolkit is a Visual Studio Code extension created by the PMP community together with Microsoft that will boost your productivity in SPFX area. So, if you are doing developing any SPFX project, solution, web part, extension, ACES, whatever, be sure to check out and give this extension a try. Uh, for sure, it will help you all the needed tasks like gulp actions, uh, deploying, packaging, upgrading, validating new solution, and many, many more. So be sure to, to give it a try. We have a V1, which you can already download directly from the VS Code Marketplace. And we have on the slide, you can see our roadmap for the V2. We already finished the first new feature, which is including now snippets, which will help you coding SPFX code, like creating a new component using React or also no framework JS. So be sure to give it a try when you will download and install the V1. You should see the install the pre-release, which was which will be the V101, which will have this feature already. And we already started on the next thing on the list, which will be generating uh, CI CD pipelines for a SPFX project. And tomorrow, just after the CLI release, we are planning a v1.1, which will also include the upgrade, upgrading your solution to the SPFX 1.17.4. Be sure to give it a try. Be sure to leave feedback. And, and we are open for contributors. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, Adam. Uh, moving on to PMP Modern Search. So there's a, a 4.9 release. Uh, great to see seven new contributors uh, included in this release with the security fix, some added scenarios. Uh, but it sounds like just go and see the release notes for all the changes and you'll be able to see them at aka.ms slash PMP hyphen search. Uh, moving on, uh, Hugo. Thank you. We have samples for extensions and SPFX web parts, and boy, have we been uh, lucky. We've got a whole bunch of new extensions. Extensions haven't been getting the love they deserve in the last little while, but we now have, in a week, we have about four new samples 
uh, in the SPFX extensions. We have a new dynamic site form customizer by Martin. We have transport for London status using OpenAI uh, by Anoop. And a personal assistant using Microsoft Graph also by Anoop. And we have a unique permission field customizer by Michal. Uh, those are all great samples. Go take a look. They will be they will be posted uh, over the weekend. And then we have some updates to the web parts. We have an update by Peter Paul Kirshner on the React directory, where he, who's, he's updated it to the latest version of SPFX. My dashboard is a new web part by Joao, uh, which is fantastic. It looks great. A new SharePoint list integration using Tiny MC Editor by Ijaz. And finally, an update to the Enhanced Power Apps by Babak Daniel. Thank you, everyone, for your contributions. If you have samples that you want to share with us, please visit aka.ms slash SPFX dash extensions or SPFX dash web parts, and you will get a fancy badge for your troubles. Back, uh, actually. Not back to you. I'm going to pass it to David for Adaptive Card Extensions. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we've got some updates here on ACES from Alex. Uh, start a survey from the dashboard. Start a Microsoft Teams chat from the dashboard. And SharePoint list integration with Tiny MCE Editor. So we are open for more samples. Definitely go check those out. And of course, we've got a sweet little badge for you on ACES as well. You got an ace up your sleeve. So check it out. Gary, back to you. See, now I confused him by passing it back to you. I know. Did we lose Gary altogether? He moved to the I next think slide. we lost Gary. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I no. He, I was yeah, oh, no, he's back. Right Over to you. <laughs> 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 it's okay. I, I guess everybody noticed already what we're doing. Uh, it's not super pixelated uh, today. This is looking good. I will get the, the, the recording moving uh, in a second. Uh, we have 50 seats in a room. A lot of familiar faces. Oh, and a cat. Dog. Cat. It's a cat. It is a cat. I can see a cat. Can you see a cat? Am I the only one who sees cats? <laughs> Should I buy a book? I will put a <laughs> <laughs> few more seats, few more seats. A lot of familiar faces. I will put the recording on. And it's super clear today. This is really, really cool. So let's do some hand waving, everybody. Thank you for joining. Really cool to have you on a call. Uh, two virtual ones there as well. This is really, really cool. And there's the cat. Cat is confused. David, David and I are sitting in the hairless section. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Let's go to the demos of the day and we'll grab a GIF animation out of that. Perfect. So, on to the first demo of the day. Alex uh, is going to be talking about new card template options for viewer connections in SharePoint Framework 1.18. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, and let me know when you can see my screen. Yep, all good. Take it away. Awesome. So uh, today I'll quickly show the uh, basically what we have new in 118 beta for SPFX. As uh, Vesa already mentioned, we released the first beta yesterday. Uh, it provides uh, new possibilities for card views now. First of all, you're getting more flexibility with uh, mixing and matching different components on the card views. Plus, we are providing new uh, capabilities to include uh, text inputs in the card views. And we have a brand new uh, template for card view for search scenarios uh, that provides you like a search box and also the footer where you can have any information you want. Uh, in my case, it's just a sample for the people search, but you can do document search or whatever search you, you like. So uh, this uh, allows you to have more engagement with your cards on your uh, dashboard. So in these scenarios, I have some survey like uh, for the movies, I click submit. Uh, you can expect that this information is sent uh, somewhere. Uh, another sample for technical support, again, if I uh, type something in here, click send, it will open the uh, Teams in my case, and this is, everything is just a custom code, so basically you can do whatever you want. But the good thing about that is uh, the information from the input is uh, available for the uh, developer, so uh, it's slow, but yeah, you can see it is appearing in the chat here, so basically it's, it's 
pretty straightforward. So uh, you can grab information from the text input and do whatever you want with that. Uh, same for people search, and uh, I'll be showing the uh, code for this one today. Uh, again, we have a search bar here. If I do something like that, search, loading, and I got results for the uh, like the the uh, Alex in that case. Uh, I have some additional information about him. Uh, so yeah, everything is available, uh, pretty rich scenarios that you can uh, implement. And now let's jump to the code and uh, I'll show you some uh, differences, some uh, new things that we are providing. So for card views now, all the new card views will be extended from base components card view. And the difference between this one and uh, like previous, uh, we don't have, uh, data getter, we don't have card buttons getter. Uh, instead of that, we have this new property called card view parameters. And in these card view parameters, you're basically describing uh, the whole layout of the uh, card view. So if you look at the uh, what we're returning from here, we are returning search card view. It's a helper that allows you to provide less information that uh, the actual types contain, but uh, we are providing card bar. This is where you have the icon and the title. You should provide header. In our case, it will be text. In the body, we want the search box. And for footer, we want to provide these uh, suggested uh, elements, suggested footer uh, with the suggested person that we grab from the uh, Microsoft Graph. So this is how you now uh, should configure the uh, card views. It's a bit more flexible. It doesn't mean that you can uh, use like any uh, custom components or any type of components uh, in the card views, we are still enforcing rules. We are enforcing rules, uh, what components can be mixed and match, uh, matched on the card, but still it provides more flexibility as right now it's not like, hey, just a basic card view or a primary text card view or image. You can mix and match them, you can combine them. Uh, yeah, and uh, in that case, for example, you can have image card view that also has a text input in the body. So much more flexibility. And uh, we will be, of course, expanding this in future. Uh, one more thing I want to uh, showcase here, if I go to my uh, the adaptive card extension itself. Uh, if you look at the on before action, so you can override this uh, method and uh, you will get the information about uh, what action is going to happen. Like for example, in, in my case, it's a quick view, but additional thing here now with the, the quick view uh, arguments, we are provi providing data uh, property in the same or a similar way as for action submit uh, actions. And uh, this is basically how you collect data from these inputs. So everything you see here, everything the user typed in the text input or in the search, this information will be available as part of your data. So this is how you basically can grab information from the card view and sync it through the state to the quick view and basically vice versa as well. And that's probably everything I have. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Alex, for that update. Um, as we have two other demos, we're going to move quickly on to uh, to, to Daniel. Uh, Daniel is going to be talking about SharePoint Framework at Microsoft and the Accelerator components. Daniel, over to you. Thank you, Gary. All right. All yours. Hi, my name is Dan Turley. I'm a full stack developer at Avanade. I've been working with SharePoint for over 10 years and most recently as part of the productivity studio utilizing SharePoint framework to build business apps. Today I'll be showing you some of the React components we have in our SPFX solution accelerator, but as always a quick overview of the accelerator. It's a set of patterns, reusable code, components, and tools I created for building business apps on the SharePoint platform. It has evolved over the last six years, and we have used it in the Productivity Studio to build a dozen business apps over that time. Accelerator is open source, and we have published a complete app to demonstrate its features. The SharePoint framework sample is named React Rhythm Business Calendar. 
All right. The accelerator has the following high level features. We have guidelines for solution structure to organize your domain models, services, components, and schema. We have a robust entity domain model with features like change tracking, validation, and relationships. There's also a services framework with provided services for SharePoint list data, time zones, and users, groups, and more. We also have dynamic provisioning of SharePoint lists for app setup and upgrade experiences. There are React components for view edit panels and dialogues, asynchronous data, live update controls, a wizard, um, and more, and we'll be talking about these today. We also have tooling to support development teams and environments. <clears throat> and last but not least, Live Update ensures your users are always collaborating with the latest data, unless you're giving a demo. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at the React components. So our first component today is the Entity Panel. This is essentially a wrapper around the Fluent UI Panel component but it adds all that boilerplate logic <clears throat> you need uh, for a details screen slash editing experience. In the example screenshot, this is a panel in the display mode, and we have a command bar across the top, followed by a header region, which can be used to display a summary of the item. Then there's a content region where you can display the details of individual fields. Uh, to open the panel, you provide it with the entity, <clears throat> and it can also be put into display mode or edit mode. There's even a read-only mode. You can use buttons in the command bar, for example, to let the user switch modes. We have built-in logic for validation and persistence. So, for example, in edit mode, you could define a save button to invoke the panel's persistence logic. That logic will first check if the entity passes all of your validation rules and either display validation errors <clears throat> or execute your asynchronous persistence logic. Similarly, there's built-in logic you can use for a close command or a cancel command, which can check if the user has made changes and pop up a dialog to confirm if they really do want to discard their changes. If the user wants to save their changes and the validation rules pass, there's a built-in spinner that appears while your persistence logic is executing. And if there's any failures, there's a built-in error message bar. There are variants of this component if you'd like to render the experience in a modal pop-up instead of a panel, or if you just want to render the content area inline somewhere on the screen without using any panels or dialogues. Plus, there are variants for all of the above if you want that boilerplate functionality, but you aren't using an entity for your data. Next up is the async data component. This component is useful as a boundary where you have data that needs to be fetched asynchronously. While the data is initially loading, it will display a Fluent UI overlay with a spinner, like the one shown on the slide, in the center of the region. In the case of an error, it will show a message bar. In the sample code here on the screen, we have an interface for our event service, and <clears throat> that service exposes a property named events async that returns an iAsync data object. That object is a generic class that holds your data, but it also has state indicating whether that data is loaded or if it's still loading or if it's being saved or if there was an error. Then below in our React component, uh, in this example, you're using a hook to get the events async value from the service. And we simply pass it into an async data component, which then takes care of the boilerplate UI for rendering spinners or an error message. The children of the async data component is a render prop, a function, which receives the actual data that you can then use to render whatever UI you need. And in this example, it's an array of events, and we're just passing it on to a custom component. Right, the accelerator also has a user picker, which is <clears throat> which is really a wrapper around the Fluent UI people picker, but it utilizes our directory service, which uses PMPJS to call the SharePoint utility API for searching principles. 
There are settings to limit the search to just users or just groups or to include both. You can also limit the search to just members of a particular SharePoint group. There's handy functionality that will resolve all the accounts if you want to copy and paste a list of emails into the box. And but most importantly, this component helps to unify the different representations of a quote unquote user. So the Fluent UI uses the iPersona props interface to represent people. SPFX has the SP user class. Um, SharePoint has principal info and site user as exposed by the PMP library. And of course, Graph has its own types. <clears throat> Our user class and this user picker component help to unify all those different concepts of a user. Next up, we have a validation component, which takes in a rule or a set of rules and wraps any UI elements, such as a text field, and displays a message in bright red text if the validation fails. So to use this component, first, what you'll want to do is define your validation rules on your entity class. In this case, we have an event entity, and we've defined a couple of rules for the title field. The title field is required, and the value can't be more than 255 characters long. And so below that, you'll see how we can use the validation component. We pass in the entity we are currently editing, and we pass in the rules that apply to this particular field. In this case, it's the title field, and we render our edit control. In this case, a basic text box. On the right, you can see a couple of examples of user inputs that have failed the validation. Next is the localized component. This is one of the newer components, and the idea here is you're building a UI where you have input controls that you need to place inside a string of text that you want to be able to localize. So in the example screenshot, this was taken from the screen for configuring a recurring event in the Rhythm of Business calendar, uh, where the user can specify that the event recurs on a specific day of every so many months. So the first thing to do is define the localization string. And this can use the standard localization plumbing in SPFX. You'll notice there are some token terms, date and every, that are in the curly braces in the string. Then in our React code, we can render a localized component, passing in the localization string and an object whose properties are named for the bracketed token terms found in the string. And the localized component will render uh, the string as text, and then it will render the specific components in place of the token terms. Next up is the responsive grid component. Well, it's a set of related components, responsive grid, grid row, and grid col for column. Uh, these are very thin wrappers around Fabric Core's 12 column responsive grid. So instead of coding up a series of div elements and constructing a string of class names for the column sizes, we have React components for the rows and columns and props for all the different screen sizes, like small, medium, large. It supports all of the same you know, push, pull, and visibility functionality. So the code on the left and the right are equivalent, but I think the code on the left is much more readable. All right, well, we have many other components that I don't have time to go into detail today, uh, such as the live update components, which are wrappers around traditional input components like text fields, toggles, checkboxes, all of that uh, used for implementing the live update experiences. Uh, there's a wizard component that helps you build an experience split across multiple screens where the user will proceed from one screen to the next. Uh, and it includes logic like validating input on the current screen before navigating or fetching asynchronous data before displaying the next screen. There's a time picker and a length of time picker. There's a, the date rotator, which you can see in the top right corner. It lets you define the granularity and to custom format the selected date. So you can use this to build an experience where the user can navigate from one date to the next or one week to the next, 
Or think of a more complicated scenario where the user might be navigating from one fiscal quarter to the next. And instead of rendering a date, you maybe render it as FY23 Q4. All right, well, that's enough for today. Thank you so much. Back to you, Gary. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Thanks for that uh, in-depth, uh, I guess, overview of, of all those uh, components. Fantastic to, to see. And uh, thanks for sharing uh, the links with us. Um, so on to the next demo. Uh, so coming up, we have uh, Samir, who's going to talk about track your modern SharePoint usage with Google Analytics. Uh, Samir, do you want to take the screen? Thanks, Gary. Let me share my screen. All right, so um, today we'll be talking about uh, how we can track uh, SharePoint usage using uh, Google Analytics. Uh, obviously, you get some analytics with the um, um, SharePoint uh, in terms of uh, page um, page views, very, very limited analytics. But if you want to take it to the next level and uh, uh, leverage Google Analytics uh, within share, your uh, SharePoint uh, uh, tenant, you can you can use SPFX. And today the demo will be around um, creating SPFX solution, uh, which is an application customizer. Uh, the role of this SPFX solution Solution is to inject the Google Analytics code in your uh, in your tenant. So it can be either to a specific site or all the SharePoint sites. Um, so um, I'm uh, yeah. My name is Samir Daudi. I'm Power Platform uh, Architect. I've been working with SharePoint for a long time. Before that, I was a more pro developer, uh, .NET developer, and um, yeah, I spent. Um, most of my time working with Microsoft technology. So um, I try to blog uh, regularly. So you can hit me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or follow me on my blog. Um, there is also a blog post about what we uh, will see today. Uh, so if I'm going uh, too fast, you can go back to, to my blog and uh, review the steps. Um, so in terms of the agenda or the, the steps uh, for today, uh, we will first create Google Analytics property uh, to track uh, the usage of our SharePoint sites. Next, we will uh, use Yoman Generator to scaffold an SPFX uh, solution. Uh, we will override the on init uh, function of our SPFX uh, solution, our application uh, customizer. So it's going to be an extension uh, where we'll just uh, inject some some uh, code in the on init, and uh, we'll bundle ship the SPFX solution and add it to the SharePoint app catalog. Um, right. So. I'm going to switch to my VM to do that. Uh, first, we're going to create uh, a folder for our solution. So let's call this uh, SP Google Analytics. I will call Yeoman Generator to do that. In terms of templates, I have only the SharePoint template, which is more than enough for today. Um, the solution name can go with uh, SP Google Analytics. It is an extension, not a web part, so the users won't see anything. Uh, and uh, the uh, the type of the client side extension is an application customizer. You can give it a more uh, user friendly name. Timer. And we can wait for um, Yeoman Generator to discover the solution. While it's doing that, I will switch uh, to Google Analytics just to create the property. So here I'm in my Google Analytics dashboard, and uh, you can have different accounts, different properties. Um, so for today's demo, I'm going to create a new property, and let's call this, um, I don't know, demo, SP, Google Analytics. We'll give it some information here. So need these, but uh, they are mandatory. So we have to, to go by the. So let's say the business side is small. And the, the target is get baseline reports. OK. Now we created our property and we have uh, three different types of collecting data. You can have uh, you can use the, the web platform, uh, Android app or an iOS app. Obviously, we go with web platform for SharePoint usage. Uh, it asks you for a website. This will be our uh, SharePoint tenant. OK, and the stream name, this is just the um, an internal name just to uh, identify the property you are looking at. So we call this demo SP Google Analytics. OK, create stream. 
basically, this is all we need from Google Analytics side. There is no additional uh, configuration or endpoints or anything like that. And uh, to be more precise, the uh, only information we need is the measurement ID, uh, previously called tracking ID. So we're going to leave it as it is. Let's switch back to uh, our VM and see how are we doing here. This may take a um, couple of minutes. So I will see if I can show you. Um, um, I think I had, sorry, I think I had uh, another place where I added all the um, So I created a solution before this because the, the scaffolding may take a long time and uh, it is the SPJ demo. Um, I've not done anything with that. It's uh, this one. All right. So it's exactly the same, uh, just to avoid waiting uh, forever for the scaffolding to finish. So we will open this in VS Code. Um, I assume you already have uh, a SharePoint framework development environment. If not, there are plenty of uh, articles about that. You will find uh, one in learn.microsoft.com with all the prerequisite um, uh, Node.js, Gulp, uh, Yeoman, the different uh, generators. Uh, but um, I hope you have a VM where you can play with, with it. So now I will open this uh, project in, in VS Code or your preferred uh, code editor. The structure of uh, Sorry, we don't need this. So uh, the structure of our code, uh, I think you, most of you are familiar with uh, with uh, the structure. Basically, you have the source. You, have, you can have different extensions here. We look at um, the extension here. But if you have read, read me file, you have some uh, manifest or JSON file where you can change the description, the name of your extension. Um, if you look at the uh, the uh, the extension itself, uh, basically, we have this on init uh, property, and this is what runs when the um, the uh, the application is enabled in our tenant. Uh, our work will, will be around this property, uh, this uh, this function here. Sorry, um, just to avoid wasting your time, I'm gonna go back to my um, my blog, and um, if you look here. The idea is. Um, uh, we're gonna ha we're gonna store the tracking ID in a, in um, in a variable uh, in our code. And uh, if you have used Google Analytics in the past, you may be familiar with uh, with this part. But basically, we we create an element uh, of type uh, JavaScript. Uh, the the source of this script is coming from Google Tag Manager, and we will append this um, after that. So just before uh, the the body section of the document, um, I will copy everything. Let's switch back to our code here, and. To paste this, this part. Uh, obviously, all we need to change here is the tracking ID. I will switch back to my measurement ID or tracking ID. We can copy this value, and this is why it identifies the property that we have just created. Um, because we have removed the predefined on init segment, so there are a couple of things that we may not need here. Um, I'm going to comment them for now. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do. You can change the description, uh, change some details about your application customizer, but uh, for the timing, that's more than enough. I will switch back to uh, my terminal, and here we will do go bundle and prepare it for shipping. Basically, this is the equivalent of saying compile my solution. It may take a couple of seconds to do that. <clears throat> All right, so once uh, it's on, we can uh, package the solution. So we're going to say go package solution and pass the, the adoption uh, shape. So basically, this will create a, a .sp package file uh, within SharePoint folder, and that's what we need to, uh, to upload to our um, uh, SharePoint tenant. So to do that, we need to go to SharePoint Admin Center and we uh, navigate to the App Catalog. So from the, um, the SharePoint Admin Center, you go to More Features and you have the App Catalog here. I don't think I have anything in this tenant. Um, let's let's have a look. Yeah, just the Microsoft Learning Pathway. So uh, what?
you can do from here. Um, you can just let me reveal this this file. Hello. I think I basically what we need to do here is to uh, drag and drop the um, um, the SP package you file into our uh, app catalog in the SharePoint tenant. All right. So uh, once we do that, we have the option of say enable this uh, custom application on all our sites. Uh, I mean, across the tenant, or you can just enable this application, and you'll have to go to the different um, different sites and add the application individually. It's up to you. So for today's demo, I'm gonna say enable this app across my tenant. So any site, any traffic, any um, any details about SharePoint usage will be captured by Google Analytics within that within that tenant. So I will enable the app. All right. So my app has been enabled. As you can see, uh, SPJ demo client side solution enable it and it's added to all all sites. Perfect. Uh, now uh, I think I have a demo site. So if uh, if I switch back to uh, Google Analytics and uh, I will look at my property. Okay, that's fine. It just says sometimes it takes uh, 48 hours to uh, for uh, the property to start capturing information, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can we can start looking at this. So I can go to the different reports. You can look at the report snapshot if you want to to see historical data, or you can look at the real time uh, real time data. Now I will and, um, start navigating in my SharePoint uh, site just as um, as I would expect any users to do. Um, I will open a couple of pages. Let's say customization instruction a week in life. And here you go. So at the moment in real time, you have one user uh, who's in Edinburgh. It revealed my location, and these are the page we are navigating to. Uh, different events have been captured, like page view, first visit, scroll, and so on. Um, obviously, you can customize your your uh, report in uh, in Google Analytics, or uh, you can pull this data back into Power BI and combine it with other uh, information and other systems and use this data as you want. But uh, um, so far, that's it. Um, under 10 minutes, we created the application, created the property, injected the application in the app catalog, and we started to get some feed in Google Analytics from SharePoint. That's it for me. Over to you, Gary. Fantastic. Fantastic demo, uh, Samir. Uh, great to see the whole end to end. Uh, love that. Um, so thank you for uh, thank you for sharing with that uh, with everyone today. Okay, uh, so we've done really well on time. Um, so we're about ten minutes to the hour. Um, so we'll we'll close up early today. Uh, but just want to uh, say thank you to uh, our. Uh, three superstars, uh, Alex, Daniel, and Samir for their, their demos today. Um, we would love you to give us your feedback about these calls. So, um, you know, please rate the content and provide input on how we can improve these calls. Um, if you have feedback, uh, please uh, submit that at aka.ms slash community slash calls slash feedback. And if you are not aware, um, there is a community Discord server as well. So if you are on Discord and you're interested in joining a Microsoft 365 and Pile Platform uh, community, uh, then you can do that by going to aka.ms slash community slash Discord, where you can share your knowledge and ask questions and, and just stay up to date on the Discord platform. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for uh, your attendance today and to the uh, the speakers and everyone to provide uh, updates. Um, so this recording will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community YouTube channel. Uh, you can view that aka.ms slash community slash videos. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, then go subscribe there today. You'll get the notification when that uh, uh, new recording is uh, available. You want to keep up on all the latest uh, news as well. You can follow us on Twitter at Microsoft 365 Dev or 
at M365PNP. Um, this uh, call, the next call, uh, Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework, uh, will be on July the 13th. Um, and the next Microsoft 365 and Power Platform call uh, will be next week uh, on July the 6th. Um, and you can get all the uh, details of how to join these calls uh, from aka.ms slash community slash calls. And with that, again, thank you very much uh, for your attendance. I uh, hope you have a great day. Uh, see you again next week.